Greetings, fellow learners. Now, before we get into this world of coding attention, I have a thought-provoking question for you. How important is it to learn to code the architecture of these complex models? And can you give your reasoning as well? So personally, I think as a machine learning engineer, we can extract the core ideas and concepts in the architecture and use it elsewhere in more tenable models that we build. And I think looking at the code really brings a concrete picture in your head about the implementation too. And hence, I think videos like this that show code of an entire architecture can be pretty valuable. But that's just my opinion. Please let me know your opinion down in the comments below. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. Now, this video is going to be divided into three main passes where we're going to talk about full attention code in the pass one, then prop sparse attention in pass two, and then end with a time and space complexity analysis. So let's get to it. This here is the code for the informer architecture, specifically for attention. So we have a class for full attention, and then we have a class for the prob sparse attention. So what I'm gonna do with this first pass is we're gonna talk about it, this entire architecture of attention in three levels. So the first is a mathematical explanation, followed by an architectural explanation, and then we're gonna dive into each line of this code in a collab notebook. So let's get started. So we have full attention here, and it's given by this mathematical representation where we apply um, a query vector multiplied by a key vector in order to get affinity for every time step with every other time step. We then scale it and perform softmax, and then we apply this attention matrix to the value vector in order to get the full attention. Now. There's a lot of terms in there that are probably a little confusing, but I think they'll become more clear as we go on with our explanation. So this is the mathematical explanation. Now let's actually walk through the architecture for full self-attention. So to start things off, let's just say that we have an input, which we have of batch size 30, then we'll have 50 time steps that we're passing in all at the same time. And each of those time steps has a 512 dimensional embedding. We pass this through a feed forward network in order to create a query vector, a key vector, and a value vector for every single time step. And because we have three vectors per time step, that's why we have the last dimension as 1,536. It's 512 that we saw over here times three. Now we will break these query key and value matrices or tensors into eight attention heads so that we can perform attention eight times in parallel. And so this 1,536 dimensional tensor is going to be broken up into eight parts. So that's why we have a 192 dimensional tensor over here. Next is the crux of the full self attention where we're going to take this entire query matrix and then apply it to the entire key matrix in order to get a matrix of affinity values for every time step with respect to every other time step. Next, we'll add a padding mask, which is used to make sure that every time step will not pay attention to the padding tokens. And you add these up, in order to get a tensor over here of 30 cross 50 cross 50. Next, we're going to perform scaling and softmax to get the attention matrix. Scaling is required because in this current form, the affinities may have very large values, in which case performing a softmax directly can lead to values in the attention matrix that are very close to one or very close to zero. And during the back propagation phase, this could lead to very small gradients, which can vanish over time. And when gradients vanish, it means the network is not learning. So in order to stabilize this training, in order to make sure that the network continues to learn, we will perform some scaling operation. And in the math equation, we saw that it was simply by dividing by the square root of DQ, which is going to be the square root of the number of total time steps that we have. 
Next, after performing the softmax operation, we're going to have this attention matrix. And we will apply it to the value tensors over here in order to get a new set of value tensors with the attention values embedded in them. And then we'll concatenate the tensors across all attention heads in order to get our final concatenated tensor. And then we have the rest of the attention block, which really we don't care about at this point. So now that we have a mathematical understanding of the full attention, we have a architectural understanding of the full attention architecture. Let's now go through some code of how do we actually code this out. So we'll start with importing some libraries up here and we'll say for simplicity's sake now, the number of attention heads is one, the batch size instead of being 30, it's just one, the sequence length instead of being 50, it's now equal to 10, which is the same as LQ, LK and LV, that is the length of the sequence of the query key and value tensors. And then D model is four, indicates the number of features per time step. And this will be the same number of features for the query key and value as we only have one attention head. And so we're going to initialize our query key and value tensors to be a one cross 10 cross one cross four tensors. Now, what we wanna do now mathematically and architecturally as we see is we wanna perform a matrix multiplication between the query and the key tensors. Now, typically you can just do this with the torch.matmul However, I'm going to use a special function called torch.einsum. It's a special function that can perform addition and multiplication and also performs like a rearrangement of tensors. And I'm using it here because you will see this actually in the original informer code. An overview of what this function actually does is this corresponds to the shape of the query. This over here corresponds to the shape of the key. And this here corresponds to the shape that we want to have for our output tensor. So B L H E for the query indicates B is one, L is 10, H is one, and E is four. Next is again for K, it's B S H E. The B is one, S is 10, H is one, and E is four. And if we want to perform this multiplication, we get an output of BHLS, which is going to be one cross one cross 10 cross 10. This effectively means that for every item in the sequence, size 10, we are getting some affinity values also of size 10. And this matrix now looks kind of like this. So each element corresponds to the affinity of a query I with key J. And the matrix multiplication requires in here, in this case, it's going to be four multiplications along with three additions for every single one of these spots. And so this operation over here will be performed in the order of LQ times LK in terms of space complexity as well as time complexity. And so it is quadratic in terms of the input. Now this line of code over here is the equivalent of what we could have performed instead of using torch.einsum. We could have just used a torch.matmul where we take the query vector as well as the key vector and perform a squeeze operation. This squeeze operation is going to remove all dimensions which have a value of just one. So for example, in this case, the one cross 10 cross one cross four tensor with the squeeze operation would have been 10 cross four. And so we would have had the equivalent scores that we saw just up here. Next, we're going to perform a scaling of these scores where DQ is now going to be four. And so the square root of four is two and hence the scaling is one over two, which is 0 0.5. Now we could perform scaling then once again, we would apply the softmax operation over here. So we have our scaled scores, we apply the softmax, and the dim equals negative one indicates that we wanna perform the softmax along the final dimension. 
That is, in this case, we know that this is a tensor of 1 cross 1 cross 10 cross 10. We want to perform the softmax on that 10 dimension. So the sum of all of these values over here is going to be 1. Sum of these values is going to be 1, and so on. And that's exactly what we see over here. Next, we're going to compute a new value tensor by applying the attention matrix with the original value matrix. And we're using torch.einsum. So we have a 1 cross 1 cross 10 cross 10 as A. And then we are going to apply the 1 cross 10 cross 1 cross 4 in order to get this final tensor. Now, the equivalent of this operation is going to be just a simple matrix multiplication. Now, this operation, too, is going to be quadratic in terms of the input, because here, too, it has the a number of operations, that is 10 multiplications and 9 additions for every spot in the 10 cross 4 matrix. So it's also quadratic in terms of the input sequence length. And so, overall, the two main matrix operations, that was when we multiplied the query with the key, as well as this case where we're multiplying the attention and the value tensors. Both of them are quadratic, at least in terms of the input. And this can be problematic for much longer sequences. Quiz time. Have you been paying attention? Let's quiz you to find out. What is the main issue of using full attention for long sequences? A, the quadratic space and time complexity with respect to input length of the attention operation. B, limited flexibility in modern architecture for long sequences. C, a lack of scalability for parallel processing. Or D, insufficient accuracy for long sequences. Comment your answer down below and let's have a discussion. And if at this time you think I do deserve it, please do consider giving this video a like because it will help me out a lot. Now that's going to do it for quiz time and pass one of this explanation, but keep paying attention because I will be back to quiz you. Now, because this entire attention operation is going to be quadratic in terms of the input sequence length, what we do is try to make it more efficient using the prob sparse attention over here. So like we did in the previous pass, what we're going to do is walk through the mathematical formulation, walk through the entire architecture, and then we're going to walk through individual lines of the actual informer code. So let's start with the mathematical intuition over here. So you can see that this formulation is the exact same as the formulation that we had seen for full attention, except this query is now a Q bar. And this Q bar is going to be a subset of query vectors itself. But in order to get this Q bar, we're actually going to have to perform some other extraneous operations, which will become more apparent in the architecture and code. Now, in the architecture, let's assume that we're only going to deal with a batch size of 1. The number of attention heads is going to be 1. And we're dealing with 10 input sequences at a time. And so what happens here is now we have a query tensor of 1 cross 10 cross 4, a key tensor, and a value tensor, which are both also of the same shape. Now, we can use this to compute just some scalar value called LQ bar and LK bar. So LQ bar is going to be this formulation where this logarithm is going to be a natural log of LQ is going to be 10. So natural log of 10, and we're going to perform a ceiling operation of it. This value is going to be 3, and we're going to multiply it by some constant factor F, which will take us 2, and you'll see this in the code too. And so 3 times 2 is going to be 6, and so LQ bar is going to be 6. And LK bar over here is going to have a very similar operation, which is 2 times the ceiling of the natural log of LK. LK is also 10. So we're going to get also the same value of 6. Now, why do we take LQ bar and LK bar? LQ bar is going to be the number of query vectors that are going to be eventually selected. And LK bar is going to be the number of key vectors that are going to currently be selected in order to compute the subset of query vectors. 
Hence, we're computing both of them over here. Next, we're going to use these values, like I just mentioned, in order to create this key sample tensor, which is going to be a 1 cross 10 cross 6 cross 4. So that is for every single query vector you'll see here, we are going to apply a subset of different key tensors. And so for every Q, we apply the K sample transpose in order to get this QK sample transpose tensor of one cross 10 cross one cross six. For every query, we would have applied attention to a set of keys. Next, we're going to compute now an affinity value. So while this text is small over here, it basically says m is equal to max of affinity of q for any k minus the mean affinity of q for any k. So the idea here is now to try to get the most active queries. And this is done by simply taking this tensor that we had over here. So for every single query, we want to determine the maximum value or the maximum attention that it is given for any key and then subtract it by the mean of all of those attentions. And we'll end up with a 1 cross 1 cross 10 tensor, in which case each value is going to be how active the query i is. But we're only going to select the top, let's say, 6 in this case, because LQ bar is 6. We're only going to select the top 6 of those values, and so we end up with a 1 cross 1 cross 6 tensor in m top. And we're going to now just select those actual queries. And then we will, that's how we get the Q bar. And then now we can perform the normal self attention operation where we apply both of these in order to get Q bar K. We perform scaling and softmax as we mentioned before. Scaling is required to prevent vanishing gradients and ensure that the network will learn. And then softmax is required to get this attention matrix. We then apply to the value matrix to complete attention operation itself. And then we are going to update a set of context vectors, which are going to be the same set of value vectors just repeated over time. And we're going to only update a couple of these. In this case, out of 10 of them, we'll update six of them, which will have the active vectors. And then there's going to be the other set, which are the default context vectors, which are the passive vectors. And after this phase, we will perform some distillation, which we have taken a look at in a very high level in a previous video, but we will continue to dive into that in a future video. So now that we looked at this mathematical operation, and we've also looked at the architecture design for prop sparse attention, let's actually seal the deal by looking at individual lines of code. So we first start off with the same number of attention heads as one, batch size is one, sequence length is 10, D model is four, and also we generate the query key and value tensors in much the same way. And we have these one cross 10 cross one cross four matrices. We then compute LQ bar and LK bar that we talked about before too. LQ bar is going to be eventually used to select the subset number of query vectors. LK bar is more immediately going to be used to select the subset of key vectors. So by doing all of the math, you would see that we were going to use NumPy over here. So you can see here, it's going to be a factor of two. And what we're going to do is it's going to be a factor times the ceiling of the natural log of LK, which is 10. And this is overall going to be six. And similarly, LQ bar will also be six. Now, for very short sequences, we can actually just perform the full self attention as it's not going to be too costly. Where this logarithmic value and all of these operations over here come in very useful is for very long sequences. And so we are going to use either LQ bar or LQ accordingly. Now, from this point, we're going to perform operations that will help us select the appropriate query vectors for Q bar. And this will involve first computing this K expand value. Now, this K expand value is going to have for every single query, we are going to have the exact same key matrix. So you can see this entire matrix of 10 cross four values, it's going to be repeated 10 times for every single query, we're going to have each of these, which is going to be a single key. 
and we're gonna have like all these keys that are applied. Now, from a code perspective, you'll see unsqueeze is going to be used. Unsqueeze is used to add a dimension, whereas expand is going to be used to kind of reshape these values into the batch size, cross number of heads, cross LQ, which is 10, cross LK, which is 10, cross E, which is going to be the embedding size of four. And hence we have this tensor. Now for every single query vector, we will now select LK bar random key vectors. And this we're gonna be storing in the variable index sample. So let's just take this first line to illustrate the example. You could see the first item over here is going to be four. This means that for the first query, we're going to select six key values and the values of the keys, or rather the index of the values of the keys that we're gonna select are the fourth key, the seventh key, the second key, the zeroth key, the eighth key, and the sixth key. And we can note here that we are allowed to sample these keys with repetition. So that's why for the second case, you will see over here that we sampled the ninth key vector for the second query twice. Now, once we have these index samples over here, what we can then do is actually select those key vectors from K expand. And that's kind of what we do over here using index sample. And then we will end up with a torch matrix of one cross one cross 10 for every query, cross six for every key and four because each key has four embedding dimensions. And that's why you can see now that these values will correspond to exactly these keys. So for example, you saw the second case have, let's see what it said here, 699462. So you could see this was the 699, nine, and it is true they are repeated, four and six. Again, you see it's repeated here and here and then two. And so you can kind of parse from here how K sample is going to look. Now that we have K sample, what we're going to do is then perform the matrix multiplication of this K sample along with Q. And we're using again unsqueeze to add dimensions, transpose to just flip the last two dimensions. And all of this is just to make sure that the dimensions align so that we can perform the matrix multiplication. And we'll end up for one cross one cross 10 for every query, we are going to attend to six keys. And how this is super important now is that, well, at least this operation is actually not super expensive in the sense that it's not quadratic in input, but it is of the order of n, which is 10, log n, which is gonna be six. And so it is not quadratic and hence can save time for longer sequences, it's more efficient. Now, next, what we're going to do is compute the queries with the highest affinity or the most active queries. And this is going to be quantified in M. So what we're going to do here is we determine the max affinity of Q for every K minus the mean affinity of Q for any K. So max affinity is going to be done by this. So that's max of across the column. We are just going to get the maximum value. And then we will subtract it with the mean of the values of the column too. Or rather, it's gonna be the sum divided by LK. So it's not truly the mean, but it is the mean in a sense. So what this actually looks like is this value. So this first value, 1.4107, you can see how we computed that. Let's look at the max value up here. So the max value for this specific query, the maximum is 1.7698. And if you compute the sum of all of these and divide it by 10, which is LK, you're gonna get 0 0.391. And if you subtract 1.7698 minus 0 0.3591, you're gonna get 1.4107, which is exactly the value that you see here. And so you can see that it kind of mathematically checks out. Now, what we wanna do here is extract the index of the queries that are the highest. In this case, you can see that we are going to extract the top LQ bar queries. And these are the index of the queries that are the largest. 
And so we end up with m top as one cross one cross six, but we wanna actually get the query values. And so we call this q bar, we will extract those most active query values. And these are the six most active query values. Next, we will now use these active queries in q bar and then we're going to multiply it with the entire key matrix, as you see in the mathematical formulation above, in order to get a matrix of affinity values. Now, this operation is also super interesting because now we are applying a matrix multiplication, not, which is not necessarily quadratic, but it's going to be of the order of n, which is going to be k, log n, that's q bar. So it's not order of n squared, it's order of n log n. And so this is a more efficient matrix multiplication, even for longer sequential inputs. Now we apply a scaling operation in order to make sure that we don't see vanishing gradients and training is stable. And then we will compute the attention matrices such that the sum of all of these values in a row is going to be one. And then now what we wanna do is compute the context vector. So first we'll take our value tensor this was the original value tensor when we were computing the query key and value way back in the beginning. We are then just going to compute the mean of all these values across the last but one dimension, which is going to be across this 10 dimension. So we're gonna compute the mean of all of these values in this column, mean of all the values in this column, mean of all the values in this column, and mean of the all the values in this column, and you'll get this tensor over here of just four values. And we will simply repeat this 10 times in order to get, this is going to be our context value vector. Now it's only a subset of these are actually going to be updated though, because that's all the active query vectors that we have. And so what we're going to do is which of the ones that are updated, it's going to be the ones that are defined in M top, the top six active values. And you can see that which are the ones that are updated, it's going to be index one, index, three, index four, index six, index seven, and index nine, which kind of matches exactly what mtop says, right? You see that one, three, four, six, seven, and nine are here, and we updated it accordingly with the attention cross value matrix values. And so overall, this will have six active vectors and four more passive vectors. And then this is then taken as an output, which we then pass into the distillation operation that will happen in the next phase. And we're gonna discuss that in a future video. Quiz time. It's that time of video again. Have you been paying attention? Let's quiz you to find out. How does prob sparse attention help over full self attention? A, it ensures the context vectors are overridden. B, it never multiplies the full query and full key matrices together. C, it uses a distillation strategy to reduce queries and keys. Or D, it chooses batch normalization and pooling to select active queries. Comment your answer down below and let's have a discussion. Now that's gonna do it for quiz time and pass two of the explanation, but do keep paying attention because I will be back to quiz you. In the last two passes, we took a look at the mathematical representation, the architecture, as well as the code for both full self-attention as well as prop sparse attention. Now, during the few passes, we illustrated some cost analysis complexity in between, but let's actually more formalize it here in this final pass to truly show how and why for longer sequences, prop sparse attention can be more efficient than the full self attention. So let's get to it. So coming into this full self attention piece, we have the inputs passed into here. We will have query key and value tensors generated. And for every attention head, we are now going to compute the query times the key tensor. Now this operation is going to be the full inputs cross the full inputs. And so we will see that 
it will be of the order of LQ, the length of the query tensor, which is going to be the sequence length, times length of the key tensor, which will also be the sequence length. Next, we're just going to perform the adding of a padding mask, which because there is going to be LQ cross LK values, it's going to be order of LQ cross LK. The softmax operation for the same reason, because we have LQ cross LK values, it's going to be order of LQ dot LK. And then we'll have the attention matrix too, where this operation too is going to involve the multiplication of an LQ cross LK matrix times an LK matrix cross some other dimension in this case, which will be like your D model or DV in this case. And at least if we just consider the inputs, it's going to be an order of operation of O of LQ cross LK. And so if you add all of these up for this entire full attention operation for space complexity and time complexity, you'll get order of 4LQ LK. And we already know that LQ and LK are both the sequence length L. And so the order of time complexity and space complexity is going to be O of L square. So it's going to be quadratic in terms of the input, which can make it problematic for much longer sequences. Now, in order to deal with this, in comes prob sparse attention. And let's see how we can actually generate this math. So we have the query key and value tensors here for which we will sample these key tensors. And then we will perform an operation of multiplication with the query tensors. Now, this entire operation is going to be more efficient as we now only have LQ for the query tensors, but we have LK bar for the key tensors. And hence the order of time complexity and space complexity is going to be OLQ LK bar. Next, we're going to compute which queries are going to be the most active queries. And this operation is requires us to compute the maximum of Q for any K minus the mean of Q for any K. And if you kind of look at how that's done, the maximum affinity involves taking the max of all of the values in a specific row, but it's only like LK bar values. And the mean affinity involves taking also the mean across LK bar values. And hence we will get O of LQ times LK bar as the total operation time and space complexity. Next, we would have selected the highest or most active queries in this case. And then we will perform the uh, query selection to get Q bar. So there's LQ bar queries that we're applying to LK keys. And so hence the order of operation, order of LQ bar dot LK is going to be the space and time complexity. And then it's the same for scaling and soft max because we have the same values. And we also need to apply the attention for every single value vector. And so this is going to be for the selected queries, LQ bar, we would have LK values or LV values in this case, but LV is LK. Next, we're going to use these now active queries or active vectors to update the context vectors. And that's going to be just a simple operation of the order of number of keys itself. Now, if we take all of these values and then try to add them all up in order to compute some complexity analysis over here, you will see that you'll get two LQ LK bar plus four LQ bar LK plus LK and L is going to be the sequence length. And you know, LQ bar and LK are some order of log L. And so if you kind of plug those values in, you will get the total time and space complexity to be O of L log L, which is more efficient than the quadratic complexity that we saw for full self attention. And hence this prob sparse attention, it can be a more efficient way to compute attention and perform attention for much longer sequences. And I hope that's pretty clear here. Quiz time. This is going to be a fun one. How do time and space complexity change with respect to input sequence length from full self attention to prob sparse attention? A, order of n squared to order of log n. B, order of n squared to order of n log n. C, order of n log n to order of n squared. Or D, 
order of log n to order of n squared. Comment your answer down below and let's have a discussion. And if at this time you think I do deserve it, please do consider giving this video a like because it will help me out a lot. Now that's gonna do it for quiz time and pass three of this explanation, but before we go, let's generate a summary. The traditional transformer uses self-attention. But this can be inefficient in time and space complexity for long sequences. This is because the core of the attention operation requires applying every time step to every other, making the operation quadratic in space and time complexity with respect to the input sequence length. To deal with this, the informer uses prob sparse attention. And as we have seen in code, Prop sparse attention can efficiently perform the attention operation in O of n log n time and space. And that's all that we have for today. Now to understand more about the informer architecture itself, I have a video right over here that you can click on to check it out. But thank you all so much for watching. And if you do like what you saw today and you think I do deserve it, please do consider giving this video a like. Subscribe for more videos and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.